All right, anyway, sprints, the biggest mistake of software engineering. I actually already agree with this take. Do we even need to read the article? Do we even need to? I mean, the man is scare quoting it just to remind you that you don't actually run. You use words that sound like exercise, but we all know you haven't left the chair in a long time. Damn, I know. Harsh, yes. Reality, real. Sprinting towards failure. Okay, let's talk a little bit about being agile. Yeah, that's a that's a word you don't describe with uh, Arch users. And the Brazilian definition of the current state of agile-generated extreme go-horse methodology. Extreme go-horse? What the hell is... Okay, I don't know what the extreme go-horse is. Now you got me. Uh, misconceptions. The first thing is to get the common misconceptions out of the way. Agile is going fast. By now, we should... We all should know that agile is not about being faster. It's about delivering value sooner and in a constant manner and being able to react and change course earlier. I wouldn't necessarily say that's what Agile's about. I th I'd say the fairest definition of Agile is to pretend that you're the king of England and you love ceremony and that tradition trumps progress. I thought that was the proper de de definition. Yeah? Right? Like we all like to get dressed up in our robes. We all want to have that nice hour and a half long ceremony for me to do the thing that I was already doing, but to say I'm going to do the thing again. And then I would love to have like a quick 15 minute check in to tell you that I'm doing the thing that I'm doing. Like, who, like, like real talk. Like, instead of like, imagine you had a roadblock. You could wait till the next day and talk about it and stand up, or you could just find the person that you're roadblocked and go and talk to them. Like, why do you need to tell everybody about your roadblock? Why not have like a little like, like why not have a team Slack chat where you're just like, yo, dog, I got blocked by this. And then instead of wasting everybody's time to be in a meeting, someone an hour later could be like, yeah, hey, guess what? I've seen this before. You know how I, I can help you with this. You know how crazy that would be to uh, completely destroy standups and just have a Slack chat every now and then? Hey, I'm just saying I'm not a big fan of multi thousand dollar 15 minute meetings, you, you know? That's my ideal. That's everybody's ideal because it's better. It just simply is better. Okay? We can even have a stupid channel called I Got Fucked Dash Your Team Name. And then you put your problem in there. And then everybody knows that that, that channel is really important to listen to. Okay? I'm just saying. I just spilled coffee on myself. We need to stand up. I got to tell everybody about this. Oh, shit. I, you know what? I need to take. I need. I need. I need a moment here. Okay, I'm going to talk about this for at least 15 minutes in stand up that I spilled coffee on myself today. Skill issue. I'm dying of skill issues. I'm literally dying of skill issues right now. I pissed myself. Oh my god, bro. Oh hell no, man. What the fuck, man? Get your ass on. Brent is doing all in the time slot. Okay, so. You're saying Agile is not about being fast, but it also means having sprints? Hmm? Questionable, so you exist in society too? Hmm? It might have been an unfortunate term used by developers of Scrum, but it certainly doesn't help with all the Agile as being fast people like to think. Sprints, however, are just a time box for a certain amount of work to be done. You know, the more I think about Agile, is Agile just really a reaction to the fact that developers don't know how to talk to each other, and we didn't have a good chat app to avoid talking to people when created. You know, like Slack really wasn't there. You know, I was I was using Skype or some some nonsense. I was literally using Skype at w one of my jobs as a form of communication. Like we were practically on we were practically on a AOL Instant Messenger, sending each other messages. Yeah, aim, just shooting a little bit of aim at each other. Oh, yeah, hey, everybody. Boomer. Yeah, boomed. The problem. Executives push for Agile and Scrum because they think uh, about being fast sprints. The biggest problem is that making software is not a sprint. It's a marathon. Yes. Well, it's actually you do 400s over and over and over again until you die or create a marathon. That's actually what software is. Is It's just individual individually the worst race you've ever done the 400 or you could say the 800 i think we could go back and forth on the worst possible foot race is either the four or the 800 and you do that over and over again until one of you die or you make a product unless you're not human you know that you cannot sprint a marathon it's really bad uh hell most people can't even sprint a short race and i'm also talking about software <laughs> what the hell are we talking about the people result burnout Plain and simple, the profession loses a lot of good people because of burnout. Not to be confused with burn down. Charts, also from Scrum, but somehow that doesn't generate any confusion for people. the same people expecting more and more from developers. So 
Burnout's burnout's very interesting. I don't think that moving fast is the problem or the expectation of moving fast is the problem for burnout. I, I just don't think that that's what causes burnout. I don't think burn down charts are what causes burnout. I don't think any of those things are. I think doing meaningless things is much easier to cause burnout, right? Like if you feel like you're just like just such a cog and you're just so cogged out and that everything you do is just such a process and every last little point in your next three, four, five, six weeks are all individually mapped out for you never to have any questions and then you're going to have to go and wake up every day and tell everybody what you're doing every single day. In some stupid meeting where some guy's going to tell you all about his dog for the 17th time about how cute Bootsies is. Well, Bootsies just so cute. You should see Bootsies this morning. Boots is so... And it's just like you do that over and over and over again. And man, that's not that much fun. Like, there's probably different archetypes of burnout. I just don't think moving fast is the problem. Right? Like, if you got up and your environment is changing all the time... And you're constantly never making progress and it's an ever like it's literally like playing WoW and just trying to level by killing uh, pigs like that uh, that Starcraft that's uh, Starcraft fuck it that South Park episode. Yeah, you get burnt out pretty pretty much because it's not fun. Let's not blame Agile for burnout. I'm not going to blame Agile for burnout. I don't think that that's the fundamental problem. Like I don't think those things make burnout worse. Like I don't think Agile itself leads to or doesn't lead to burnout. Let's blame Agile for everything. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I mean, understandably, Agile, Agile is like that kid that always tells too much, and you just want to punch him. That's real. I understand that. The problem I have with just like whenever someone says like Agile is actually great or Agile can be, you know, like you're talking about Scrum, not Agile. The problem is, is that Scrum is an implementation of Agile in some sense. It's the attempt to codify what Agile is into a thing, into a set of things people can do. And that becomes increasingly more and more difficult. Kanban is another one of these, but Kanban can feel equally as like miserable as Scrum is, right? It can be equally miserable because Kanban, in some sense, I find Kanban almost worse because it's just like you're literally so replaceable that you're just a cog that takes off the top of the list like that's your value is that you are just like how do we effectively drive software engineering into what llms should do right it's just like we're going to break down the task as as small as possible and you're going to just shove through these things on just like a fire hose right kanban is never ending torture absolutely and so it's just like my i mean my personal favorite way to develop things is that you get together with the people you're you're trying to develop with set a set of like goals and then you come back a week later and you talk about how are your like progress towards the goals going and any roadblock or anything you have in the way you reach out to the team members individually you don't you don't do any sort of planning you don't do anything of course that's agile agile that's the problem with agile agile has such a broad definition it's only part of agile it's one definition which is a team should set forward its own thing right that's it Just set a goal. As a team, we set one goal, one thing we want to make. We want to improve the reliability of Service X. Go and make it happen, team. Right? Fail fast. It's it's, but it's not a sprint. Like there's no there's. I don't think check ins or I don't think like tasks and extreme breakdowns work. Right? If everybody's held accountable for what they do and every last person wants to see change and works hard. You don't need all these rules, right? And when people aren't doing it, you're protective of the team. And you talk to them, you address issues, and eventually you have to let them go. Like, it's that simple. I'm going to agile these nuts across your face, right? Such hard stuff. Well, you you have to create the team. You have to create the team you want, right? Anyone that thinks you can't create the team, then that's a, that's a problem. This assumes, yes, again, You are the reason why teams have to be held accountable, right? You have to find people like yourself that hold people accountable, and that's that. Like, if you're if you're trying to do it in some top-down way, you're going to just land in Scrum and daily meetings and every this, that, and the other because now management has to come in, and they're the ones that have to go through and do all this stuff, and then it's just awful. Like, I don't want that. Do you want that? I don't want that. But I love my Scrum mommy. Well, we all love our Scrum mommy, okay? Okay. 
but only one team gets a scrub mommy, and that ain't me. Okay. Uh, first off, I don't believe that. I I, do, I don't believe this at all. Right here, uh, I cannot create my team, and thirty million is on the line, and contracts with deadlines are in effect. If we fire people, I have no one to replace them. BS. If you literally paid people a good wage, a competitive wage, whatever that competitive is for your area, slightly better, 5% better, 10% better, whatever it is, you will literally have a load of developers knocking on your door right now saying, pay me, pay me, pay me, I'll do the work, I'll do the work good. And you you can just hand pick right now great talent, okay? There are people desperate for jobs right now. This I. This idea that somehow, like, I mean, I understand, like, tribal knowledge is really important, and you can't just get rid of an entire team and then come back and create a new one, right? Like, that's not, it's not that easy, right? People are really, 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 really wanting to work. There's plenty, like, that is not, right? That is not, like, a thing, okay? All right, anyways, uh, develop, uh, deliver, deliver software not fast, but with consistency. The first thing people see in new frameworks is how fast they can make a to-do app. Yes, I hate to-do apps. <laughs> I hate to-do apps. But that's not the reality for most of us. Go horsing, quick and dirty to make a big bowl of muddy pasta is okay for an MVP side project and a throwaway project. I still don't know what go horsing is. Is this like a is this a Brazilian term that's being like transliterated across languages? Is there like is am, am I missing something? Uh, but most of the time, you'll be working for months on end on something. What matters? Making one thing faster than slowing down on each new feature until you jump ship. This, uh, yeah, this, <laughs> this is actually pretty funny. Is that you slow uh, the 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 inevitable slowdown or decide to rewrite the whole thing, dude? Oh, holy cow! Oh, so this must be a, th okay. So this is I see Axiom Eight, Axiom Ten. This is funny because right when I said jump ship, my next thought was, or you just try to burn the ship and get a new one, and then here you go, rewrite the whole thing. I might. Okay, maybe Extreme Go Horse is a I'm a fan of. Extreme Go Horse. Like, is this is this HTMX mentioned? Is this what's happening right now? Okay. As I was writing this post, it came to my attention that Extreme Go Horse is commonly known only by Brazilian devs. Yes, I literally I but first off, Brazil mentioned. Can we get a Brazil mentioned? Can we just get a I just 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 so you know. Brazil was just mentioned, okay? And I, I don't think people are 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 experiencing how amazing that is. Plasas. Plasas. Right? Brazil mentioned. This is fantastic. Horse and the man's horsing around. But not enough around the world. This was made by who knows when, by who knows who. It's a little outdated in the writing. I'll refactor as needed, but you'll see. It's timeless. See Axiom 14. Uh, and, re and relevant to what I was saying. Disclaimer. This is basically not a to-do list. It's a funny, it's let's see, it's funny as a meme, but as I like to say, if all you do are things from memes, then your life is a joke. It's a real take. You know those people that always are like ironic on the internet, and they're and they're and they're continuously just like saying shit that's like really on the edge, like real edge lords, and they're just constantly being like, "Dude, it's just a joke, bro." But they only operate in that mode. You know what I mean? And you're just like, "Are you sure you're living ironically, or are you just like, is that just you?" It's this. This is who you are. Uh, there were some translations out there, but I translated them here by trying. Uh, let's see, by trying to update things and make it more easy. Uh, make it more sense today. Enjoy, but don't follow it. Little note: people usually uh, just read X G H Extreme Go Horse as Go Horse. All right, the Go Horse manifesto. By the way, I typically don't like to read manifestos. Um, just the idea, the, the whatever reason, the word manifesto gives me the heebie-jeebies. Okay, I don't, I don't, I don't like it, but we're gonna do it anyways. Here we go. If you had to think, it's not extreme go horse. In extreme go horse, you don't think. You do the first thing that comes to mind. There's no second option. The only option is the fastest one. There's this weird part of me that likes and hates this all at the same time. I feel, I feel like a mixed drink right now. You know what I mean? I can't tell which part of me loves this and which part of me hates this. You know what I mean? And the hard part is, is that I'm thinking about something and it just told me not to think. Let Tim cook already. Okay, so so extreme go horse can also be replaced with GSD. That's the American way to say it, which is get shit done. Um, yeah, for the most part, I actually genuinely agree with this. Whenever I'm prototyping or kind of specking out something or just trying to investigate how something works... Like, this is what I do. I don't even try to make it pretty at all. 
I, I'm building it just to get shit done, come up with some ideas, and then maybe make something that makes sense later on. Uh, there are three ways of solving a problem. The right, the wrong, and the extreme go horse, which is like the wrong one, but faster. I'm not sure if these are great axioms. Extreme go horse is faster than any other methodology of software development you know. Okay. Okay. The more extreme go horse you do, the more you'll need to do it. For each problem solved using extreme go horse, about seven more will be created. But all of them will be solved using uh, extreme go horse. Extreme go horse tends to infinity. I'm glad we got like the limit definition of extreme go horse as time goes as time goes to zero is infinity. React mentioned. Is that, what it, is that what we're seeing? Zoo? Zoo mentioned? Uh, extreme go horse is completely reactive. Errors only exist when they surface. So that's kind of a funny phrase they're using there. Errors only exist when they surface, which by all definition is the only ways in which errors become known, which you can be proactive by trying to look at the surface. So is it reactive or proactive? Extreme Go Horse accepts everything. Solved the problem, compiled, commit. That's it. Always commit before updating. If shit happens, your part will always be correct, and your colleagues can go fuck themselves. <laughs> I think I'm a huge fan of. I think I'm a huge fan of Go Horse right now. Extreme Go Horse. Go Horse. I think I, I'm. I'm in on this one. I'm in on this one. Extreme Go Horse has no deadline. The deadlines uh, set by your client are more are mere details. You always. Uh, be able to implement everything in the given time, even if it involves accessing the database with shady script. I mean, I've, I've worked that job. I've been at this job. I know this job. I feel this job. Be prepared to jump ship when it starts to sink or blame someone or something else. For those uh, who use Extreme Go Horse, one day the ship will sink. Uh, the more time passes, the more the system becomes a monster. The day the house falls, it's better to have your LinkedIn updated or have something to blame. Be authentic. Extreme Go Horse does not respect standards. If you write code however you want, let's see, write code however you want. If it solves the problem, commit, and that's it. Isn't that pretty much? I mean, I mean, that's actually just modern day coding. This is this is actually just like this is actually just like this is just coding, right? I, I hate to break this to you, but this is how everybody writes code. When somebody tells you something is cleaner, it's not cleaner. It's because they like it differently. Okay, some people like their cucumbers pickled. Like that's just a fact of life. 10. There is no refactoring, only rework. If shit happens, redo a quick extreme go horse that solves the problem. The day the rework involves rewriting the entire application, jump ship, uh, and the boat will sink. It will sink. It actually will sink. I have rarely seen a rewrite work, and when a rewrite happens, I have just never have never seen good things about rewrites. Extreme go horse is completely uh Anarchic. Uh, the figure of a project manager is completely disposable. There is no owner. Everyone does what they want when problems and requirements arise. You know, this isn't far from bad advice. Because, I mean, I understand, like, this whole list is, like, supposed to be bad advice. But there's accidentally good advices in here. In the sense that everyone should try to solve a problem or everyone should try to like do what they think is best when problems or requirements arise rather than having formal meetings about everything. Like I'm actually on that team that there is something like sometimes these bad advices are actually accidentally okay. Always delude yourself with promises of improvement. <laughs> I mean, I agree with that. Okay. I agree. I agree. I mean, I, I, I agree. Tweet material. Putting to do in the code as a promise of improvement helps the extreme go horse developer not feel remorse or guilt for the shit uh, for the shit they made. Of course, refactoring will never be done. See Axiom 10. Uh, extreme go horse is absolute. It does not cling to relative things. Time and cost are absolute. Quality is totally relative. I actually this is accidentally true. I know this is supposed to be a meme, but this is accidentally true. Uh, never think about quality only, let's see, only about the shortest time, to, uh, the solution can be implemented. In fact, don't think, just do it. That's axiom one. You should have cited axiom one. Okay. If we are proper here, you would have known that, 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 that if you had to think it's not extreme go horse, you would have known that, but you clearly didn't, you forgot clearly whoever wrote it was not thinking. Uh, extreme go horse is timeless scrum uh, extreme programming all of this is just a fad extreme go horse does not cling to fads of the moment that's for the week extreme go horse has been and it will always be used by those who disregard quality <laughs> 
Extreme Go is not a workaround. Oh, let's see. Hold on. Extreme Go Horse is not always workaround oriented programming. Many workaround oriented programming uh, requires a high level of thinking, but Extreme Go Horse does not. See Axiom One. Thank you. Translator note: In the original, it uses Gambaria oriented programming. Since I understand some people will know what Gambaria is, it's more encompassing term than just hack or workaround. Is Gambaria something like circumference? Is that like fair-ish? It means ass, doesn't it? Gambaria is like Brazilian MacGyverism. Appreciate that. Anyways, uh, don't try to swim against the tide. If your colleagues use Extreme Go Horse for programming and you are the stickler who likes to do things properly, forget it. For each design pattern you use correctly, your colleagues will generate 10 times more rotten code using Extreme Go Horse. Uh, Extreme Go Horse is not dangerous until a little order arises. The axiom is very complex, but it assumes the projects using Extreme Go Horse is in the midst of chaos. Don't try to add order to Extreme Go Horse. Uh, it's useless, and you can waste precious time. This will make the project sink even faster. Don't don't try to manage Extreme Go Horse. It is self-sufficient, just like the chaos. You know, there's actually an accidental piece of wisdom in this one as well, which is like, if you came into a project, it had one month to ship, and it's just absolute craziness. Like, do you think you could just say, well, this is crazy. We better rewrite this, right? Sometimes you do just have to embrace the chaos. Sometimes you're like, this, cra this is crazy. I'm going to make a script that does like a full integration test on this and i'm gonna hope everything goes great you know like you just sometimes in thanos mentioned sometimes you just gotta go for it you know what i mean just give the gasoline for the fire you called yeah, exactly chaos Cla uh, charlie yeah exactly let's see uh go horse is your ally but it is vengeful <laughs> as long as you want go horse will always be on your side be careful don't abandon it if you start a system using go horse and abandon it using trending methodology you're fucked go horse does not allow for refactoring c10 and your new system full of frills will collapse a and at that time only go horse can save you if it's not working don't or if it's working don't touch it never change let alone question working code i mean this is every piece of legacy code that has ever existed. That's a waste of time, especially since refactoring doesn't exist. <laughs> C10. Time is, is the gear that moves Go Horse, and quality is a negligible detail. Testing is for the weak. If you put your hands on Go Horse system, you better know what you're doing. If you know what you're doing, why test? Testing is a waste of time. If code compiles, that's enough. Get used to the feeling of imminent failure. Failure and success always go hand in hand, and in GoHorse, it's no different. People often think the chances of a project failing using GoHorse are always greater than it being successful, but success and failure are a matter of perspective. Did the project go down the drain, but you learned something? Then it's a success for you. The always positive Bob Ross style. I love it. Uh, the problem is yours only when your name is in the get blame. Never put your hand on a file whose author is not you. If a team member dies or is sick for a long time, the boat will sink. In this case, use Axiom 8. <laughs> oh my goodness. More is more. With Go Horse, you thrive on code duplication. Code quality doesn't matter, and there's no time for abstractions, code, code reviews, or refactoring. Time is essential, so copy and paste quickly. Again, there's so much accidental almost wisdom in here. Almost. It's like so close. Isn't it funny that what is actually a good idea can be masqueraded as such a bad idea? Isn't it funny how that works? Like that you could like that's it's actually one of the dangers. It's, I think it's one of the reasons why really bad ideas tend to crop up in software is that I can make such a straw man such as this and sell it as a reason why you should abstract everything. And it's like I've just created this bogeyman. That's like impossibly scary. This is why we should do something else. And then the next thing you know is you find yourself just with builder factories coming out the ass. It's crazy. Right? Uh, not accidental. We now, uh, we, we know it's the right way. It's uh, it, like, it's grog programming, not grog. Grog is something different. Anyways, the code is the documentation. I actually do agree a lot with this general approach. Uh, in GoHorse, the code is the only documentation needed. Comments and additional documentation are just a waste of time. If someone can't figure out how the code works, they shouldn't be working on it. See Axiom 20. Um, again, this is so close to being true. I actually really dislike 99% of code comments. One of my favorite code comments was a code comment at the top of the file and just said, hey, I had to make a lot of shortcuts in this file. I want you to know that beforehand that these two tickets in Jira were the reason why I did what I did. I'm not happy about it, but I did it and I am happy about it. The bug was fixed. 
This coat is shit. Sorry. Not sorry. That was at Netflix. It was fantastic. One of my favorite developers I've ever worked with put that code comment at the top. It was amazing. It was perfect. It was exactly correct. The code was shit. I couldn't be upset because I saw why it was, and I just kind of agreed. I was like, yeah, you know, you're right. You're right. You're right. The code is horse crap. The go- the code is go horse, but I'm not sure if you could give any. You, I don't I don't know if you could do any better in go horse. A security is a secondary detail. It's a waste of time to implement robust security. C five and seven. Trust in luck. The lack of interest from hackers. See Axiom eight. <laughs> it's pretty good. This is pretty good. Uh, you know it's weird because I can't tell what part of this was satire and what part of this wasn't satire you know what i mean like i can't tell i honestly can't tell because like this right here feels like it's meant to be true right that agile is not about moving fast it's about delivering value sooner and in a constant manner and being able to react to change uh, and change course earlier like that feels like you're, you're trying to give a legit definition of agile and then just tosses in in Go Horse, you don't think. 